And here you can see G91 feet per rev has been activated. So anytime I move the spindle, well, there's there's a Z command somewhere, right, to trigger a move. And now it's only going to move as long as the spindle is also moving. Okay, now this is going to be my first shot at constant surface speed. I did make a couple of dry runs and I had to tweak the VFD parameters in order to avoid VFD error codes such as uh, over tension because constant surface speed has very frequent acceleration and decelerations and, and it's hard for the VFD to keep up with such a high inertia between the motor and the spill and this very large diameter track. Hey, now that we've seen the results, I'll go into the details of how I achieved this setup. So this starts with two 85 pulleys that I had to bore to size. I'm just showing you here the one that mounts a bearing inside. So it gets 20 millimeter hole and then the boring bar to have a press fit with the bearing. Now for this job, I'm using a 16 millimeter DCMT boring bar with an aluminum insert and notice that I'm doing a kind of end phase boring cycle that's because 
I'm starting with a very small diameter, so I don't want the tool to heat the inside while I'm doing a diameter boring. Next, we are with the... Next, I have two blocks square in the mill, now held in a forger chuck, and this one is having some kind of nut that is turned to fit the ID of the bearing. Now, it may look like a sloppy fit, but that's because it's a deep roof ball bearing and it kind of wobbles on its own if it's not supported. So, right there we have a slip fit and I'm going to assemble that with retaining compound. Next, I'm milling two plates. Note I had to speed this up to 15 times. That's a fairly slow job, but there's a reason for that. I'm using a 5mm carbide aluminum end mill, but I cannot speed the spindle upwards of 2500 RPM. And the thing is, this is a kind of old manual mill. I retrofitted the motor. You can check in my previous videos for that with a 3 kilowatts and VFD uh, AC motor. But it still has the tapered roller bearing that those kind of spindles have. And it's not lubricated by oil, it's lubricated by grease and there's no circulation. So even though the, those bearings can probably withstand a speed of up to 5,000 RPM, this is limited by the heat rejection capability of the setup and it's not much because there's no oil circulation in the spindle. So I don't want to fry the bearings, I'm being conservative on the speeds. You can tell the spindle body is warming up slightly, but not so much, so I'm, I can wait a little longer and, and keep a healthy spindle there. Now those two plates are held by screws in the excess of the parts, in some kind of um, aluminum fixture plates, sacrificial fixture plates. Uh, I'm adding um, grips at the end, that's just to prevent vibration, they're not holding the two plates. The, they are bolted down. Here I'm just machining slots to enable the bearing blocks to slide up and down and then trimming the part. On to the assembly. Well, this was the preliminary version anyway. I'm going to share the modifications I've done. Now, this bearing sits is it has a slight fit in the ID, gets assembled with retaining compound, which does pretty much the same when, once it dries as a press fit. This is the Hyden ERN 1070 encoder that I'm mounting on the forward block. And this kind of encoder mounts with a flexible stainless steel adapter that complies with within a couple of uh, tens of millimeters to whatever your assembly divisions are. It also allows not to stress the encoder body and bearing if there's any misalignment. Now onto the assembly. On the left, I actually removed the Z servo housing and now I'm putting it back together because I needed to drill and tap those holes on the sides to mount the plates. Now reassembling the servo and tightening the coupler.
now on to fit the plates so I can slide this encoder assembly back and forth so that the two pulleys of the one on the spindle and the one on this assembly are aligned and then I can slide the two bearing blocks up and down to adjust tension of the belt. Finalizing the assembly took me much more time than I expected. This first version did not go very well. You will see later that the encoder wobbles a lot when the spindle is rotated and that's because of the bearings, bearing setup I elected to do just with the bearings I had in my shelf. Now after a couple of tries I ordered a set of new bearings and modified the assembly so that there's a through shaft that supports the pulley with two bearings on one on each block. So this way the pulley is much more supported and there's no encoder wobbling anymore and that's much much better. So anyway it took me a little bit of time and that's a lesson learned. Do not try to do with whatever you have on your shelf, just order the right parts so that you do it only once. Hey now sharing the final version of this encoder mount. Now you can see there's a hole there while there used to be a snub and with a smaller 8mm ID bearing fit in there and there's the same in this block. So there, there's a shaft supporting the pulley properly. And that's really what you want to avoid any kind of misalignment and wobble of the encoder which is still a precision measuring instrument so you don't want that. You can also see there that the C-axis pulley is mounted just before the encoder pulley. Now I had luck, quite a lot of luck boring this pulley because there's really just a couple millimeters of uh, rim left and it slides very nicely on there with a very slight press fit and I'm going to assemble that with retaining compound whilst, once I have fabricated two flanks to keep the belt in the track. So in the end, it, it's just fine. There's no wobbling motion or, or anything. By the way, just a quick tip. If the bearings are not exposed to any kind of, of heavy contaminant, water, uh, oil or, or anything, shielded bearings are quite enough and there's much less friction in shielded bearings than there is in sealed bearings. So that, that's it. That's cheaper and, and there's less friction in the system. And friction in measuring equipment can lead to hysteresis, so that's not something that you want. If you can avoid, just don't do it. So that's it for today. Hope you liked that, and please leave a comment if you did, and tell me how I should improve. Now I'll be sharing shortly how the C-axis is coming together.